we again need to find the area between a bunch of given relations. It's good to have a basic idea of what these functions look like. It doesn't have to be all that precise, but the function e to the 4x basically looks like this. e to the negative 5x looks something like this. x equals negative 1 is going to be this vertical line right here, and x equals 2 is going to be this vertical line over here. So the region bounded by these graphs is again split up into two pieces. You have one piece here and one piece on the other side side of the y-axis. Again, since these functions cross within the interval that we're interested in, we need to split this integral up into two pieces to find the area. The x values on our first piece we know right off the bat. They go from negative 1 to 0. In this region, from x equals negative 1 to 0, the upper function is e to the negative 5x, and the lower function is e to the 4x. We subtract the upper function minus the lower function, and that will give us the area of this first region. We'll then add on the area of the second region, whose x values go from from 0 to 2. In this region, the upper function is e to the 4x, and the lower function is e to the negative 5x. That's the integral. That's the setup. We just need to evaluate it. Integrating e to the negative 5x technically involves a u substitution with u equals negative 5x. But as we've learned in the past, the result of that u substitution is that we just get e to the negative 5x back, but we have to divide by that negative 5. Likewise, integrating e to the 4x does involve a u substitution, u equals 4x. But we know that the result of that u substitution is going to be division by 4. So hopefully, if that makes sense, we can save ourselves just a little bit of time, and we can evaluate that piece from negative 1 to 0. The same thing applies in this integral. We can maybe simplify one step. All I did was change this minus a negative into a plus. And now we can evaluate this at our upper and lower limits and hopefully get a simplified answer. And I can already tell that this is going to be ugly. When we plug in x equals negative 1 as our lower limit, I plug that in right here. Here, that's going to make the exponent on e a positive 5 for this term, and it's going to make the exponent on e a negative 4 for this term. Then plugging in our upper and lower limits on the second piece gives us an exponent of 8 and negative 10. Let's simplify what we can. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. We can distribute this negative sign through these parentheses. The third piece stays pretty much exactly the same. And the fourth piece, we can distribute the negative and call e to the 0, 1 again. And oh my gosh, this is kind of a mess. All of these e's have different powers, so there's really no way to combine these four terms. We can't combine the negative 1 fourths and the negative 1 fifths. That would give us negative 2 fifths and negative 2 fourths. The rest of the terms, I don't think we can really reduce. So we're just going to box that up and call that the answer. And that is going to do it for this problem. Okay, I hope that helps. If it does, let's go to the next video.